everyone welcome to another video today is the day we're going to talk about my sweater cal this is the first cal on my channel uh, hopefully not the last but you know we'll see how it goes and my first pattern which will hopefully be available very soon for you to uh, print out if you want to uh, the plan is first of all please bear with me because I've never done this before. Every crocheter is different and I'm sure that I have difficulties in areas where other people might find simple and vice versa. And so just like I'm here for you, we can talk about stuff. I'll do my best to explain things if things are not clear. Um, yeah, we're going to do this together. The pattern is called, I think, I'm, I think this is the final name. It's going to be the half and half sweater because you start with two halves and then you join them to make the finished sweater. I get into just the construction and showing you examples of what you can do just to give you some ideas. So this is the first version. I'm sorry if you can't see my face, I'm trying to <laughs> make everything work so you can see the sweater. This was my first version and probably my favorite because of the colors, the yarn, and uh, just the fit. You can see that unlike the others, I did a different border, which I think is very cute and feminine, and I'll try to also include it in the pattern, and I also used it here. Uh, I just love that added detail, so I'm not sure, maybe we'll do that, or for sure I'll try and give you options. And as you can see, the sleeves, you have a lot of control on how fitted you can make them because we do uh, increases as we crochet starting from the cuff. But the body is more straight. There is no shaping here. So we should take that under consideration and kind of figure out what you want. Uh, I think this pattern lends itself really well for just like a nice sweater with a little bit of positive ease so nothing too clinging um, or you can go a bit more oversized uh, this can also show you a little bit of color inspiration if you have a yarn you really love maybe you're not super colorful but you can kind of go uh, like a monochromatic way it's very very easy to change colors in the pattern and you will get, if you change them in the body, then you will get these uh, vertical stripes because of the way the sweater is constructed. So this is DK yarn that is mostly cotton. It's Flufina from Junkans Wolle in Austria. I think they also have a German store, not sure, but it's gorgeous, gorgeous yarn. Uh, here's a little bit of a close-up on how the stitch looks with DK weight um, cotton blend but this is mostly cotton i think like i think it's like 80 percent cotton it is beautiful and i did here uh, such a long ribbing with a single crochet like back loop only single crochet so i'm just showing you the options uh, maybe to give you an idea and like help you <laughs> decide <laughs> what is your jam so that is one of the options okay so this is a more <laughs> colorful version and i was very adventurous here with the um, uh, weight of the yarn because i used for the ribbing i'll show you here i used for the ribbing one dk strand and a smaller size uh, hook and then for the body of the sweater like this part with all the beautiful colors i used three um, strands of DK weight yarn. This is acrylic and you can see because I used three, <laughs> three strands, it is more chunky. I really like the way that it looks. I really feel that the pattern still allows me to get a nice uh, fitted look also with a more chunky yarn. I mean, this is DK, but it's like three strands. And here's a closer look that you can see how the stitch pattern looks with three uh, DK strands. This is the join and I was 
all kinds of adventurous on this so the joint is not exactly in the middle <laughs> we will do ours in the middle but what I did here is I actually made the sweater uh, till here and then all of this I added uh, later once it was connected here and this for this part I used actually two strands of DK so I really played around with the textures I won't be able to show you all the possibilities, but I just want to kind of give you an idea of how much you can do once you understand the construction of the sweater. And yeah, it's just like super fun. You can really make your own designs. So as you can see, I think just um, for my body type where I have like I'm smaller on the top and I have compared to the rest of my body, a more narrow waist. So this kind of design with doing something a little bit more chunky here and then kind of making it a bit more fitted. It's not really fitted. It's just because the yarn is not so chunky like here. Uh, it just, I think it looks very flattering uh, in my opinion. And as you can see here, I also did a shorter sleeve. So that's of course an option. Uh, if you feel that would motivate you or of course if you just like the length you can absolutely do a shorter sleeve and obviously that will make your sweater uh, come together faster so here i made a half double crochet ribbing and i think that's what we will be doing just because it happens very fast and it's very easy and at the top here i also did a little um like neck ribbing with i think this is also a half double and then at the bottom here, again, I just use one color. So this is also fun because uh, you can use the DK yarn and just play around with it. Uh, I really like having here uh, like a thinner ribbed part because I don't like the rib, like the cuffs or the ribbed parts or the parts with the ribbing <laughs> to be super chunky that's just like my personal thing I don't like it and playing around like this with the strands like one strand two strands three strands uh, really worked very well in my opinion so this is another option okay number three and as you can see this is a totally different look it's much more cozy oh the other ones that the other one that i was wearing this one is made from mostly a uh, color crafter from schipias it's just like a basic really really nice and soft beautiful colors acrylic dk weight yarn nothing special so if you can't get your hands on like some fancy yarns or if it's not in your budget i love this <laughs> it's one of my favorites that i've made and this is like really really inexpensive yarn so this one is made from macaron from ice yarns which is i think they classify it as a four weight yarn but it is a pretty chunky uh four weight i would say it's it's chunky it's five weight and you can see that i made it much bigger it's more oversized it's longer so very wintry very nice for at home and just like a completely different look again you can see how easy and nice it is to add kind of vertical lines uh, it's really really simple there's nothing to it you just change colors at the bottom here and you'll see it all kind of come together as we make the sweater and yeah i made the sleeves longer if you like that if you like that your sleeves kind of cover your hands uh, it's very very easy to do and here again we have some ribbing i think this is half double <laughs> no no i think maybe this is a single i can't remember this was already so long ago maybe it's half double uh, i like the half double crochet ribbing because it looks cute and it happens really fast so i like that uh here you can see i kind of experimented with a v-neck which uh, just takes a little bit of fiddling and I don't want to make things more complicated than necessary so we won't be doing a v-neck but if you know you can very very easily adjust it to a v-neck um, with a pattern it's super simple it's just the the ribbing part is a little bit more tricky but yeah and again I did some ribbing at the bottom 
Uh, I really like it even if you're doing a colorful sweater. I really like to keep the ribbing in one color. I think it just brings everything together and makes it look more balanced and finished and polished. So that's my recommendation if you choose to go colorful. But this is another option. You can see also the stripes in the back. And yeah, really like this one. Haven't worn it in a while, but I feel really, really uh, nice wearing it. Okay, last but not least, sorry, it's a little bit more cropped, so I have this tank top underneath. Uh, this is the one I made with Fluffy Day from Hobie. And as you can see, like, I don't know if the camera kind of shows it, but it has, especially for acrylic yarn, it has such a nice drape to it. It's very light and I just really, really love the result. I'll show you how the stitch looks. So if you're not familiar with Fluffy Day, it's, it's again, 100% acrylic yarn, but it has this kind of more of a halo. Uh, this is how it looks in the skein, obviously a different color than what I'm wearing. And yeah, it's really, really beautiful. And because of the halo and the stitch, you can really use like a larger needle and it comes together pretty fast. So as you can see here, uh, I made a very, very small ribbing. This is half double crochet and I think it's only like three or four stitches. And then I have a really nice, almost like puffy, like a little bit fun sleeves. But then the body is still quite, well, it's not like super fitted, but it's not very oversized. And at the bottom, again, I did a very simple uh, ribbing. So you can really choose if you want like a small ribbing just to finish it off, you can do that. But if you want something that will kind of tighten the bottom a little bit more, then you can just do a bigger ribbing and keep it tighter. Uh, but I kind of like the, I don't like when things are like clingy here. So I like the more free uh, option. And then at the top, I was actually a little bit experimenting with just like a kind of more of a open, like a straight, it's not open, just like a straight uh, line. So I don't know if we'll explore this option, but it definitely, is that a, is that an edge, <laughs> a loose end? Oh no, <laughs> uh, but uh, you can definitely do that. I think once you start making the sweater and understand how it looks and works, uh, you will feel comfortable, I hope so, to kind of try your own thing. So this is, these are the ones that I've made so far and I'm going to be making at least one more during the cal. I kind of want to make two, but I don't want to bite more than I can chew. <laughs> that rhymed. <laughs> okay, so let's uh, sit down and talk in more detail. I think you will enjoy this pattern if you are not an absolute beginner, but you can still be a beginner, but like an adventurous beginner that is willing to try and adjust as you go and not be afraid to frog things and be ready for the the fact that this is a process and if you want to make a garment that fits your body it's it's going to be different than my sweater that fits my body and so i will show you how to you know increase the sleeves and shape the neck but you'll still have to try the sweater on and maybe make adjustments, maybe add some rows, frog some rows, frog the seams and try again. Once you kind of get used to the idea that you don't just like get a, a, a pattern, make it and get a sweater that perfectly fits, because I think that rarely happens. Uh, if it happens all the time to you, then that's great, but I... That has not been my experience. So I just realized that we're just all different and it's much, much easier to understand how to make something and then adjust it to your uh, style preferences and body structure than to just like follow a pattern, you know, oh, I'm a size medium usually in the store, so I'll just do this size medium and hope for the best because 
that is many times a recipe for disaster. So please keep that in mind and just see it as part of the process. And I think the joy that you will get as you're making it, as you're trying it, as you see how it fits and how you can control the, the look of it and the structure, um, yeah, I think it will also help you with future patterns and not just this one. Uh, also, something I wanna say is I'm going to show you some examples I only encourage you to join me if you are excited about the shape of the sweater. Yes, it's basic, but you can play a lot with, you know, the different ribbings, the different edges. I can't show you everything, sadly, but, and there are like many possibilities that I have in my head that I just, I don't have enough hands and hours in the days to crochet everything I want to, but uh, you, need to be excited. If you're not excited about this project, then I really recommend just to look for something else because that excitement will keep you motivated. So choose yarn that you love. Don't you don't choose something that you just want to get out of your stash or that, you know, or that you just like want to use up or like you got on sale or something or you can get on sale or something like that. Use yarn you love, use yarn that uh, with a color that you love seeing on yourself and crocheting. To me, it makes all the difference in the world. And that is what I recommend to you for all your projects, but also especially for this one, because a sweater is, you know, it's not something you can just whip up in a couple of hours, sadly, right? <laughs> so choose something that really, really makes you excited. Think about what you have in your wardrobe that you love and what you might need and then think about the fit like if you want it to be like really oversized uh, you can do that if you want the sleeves to be like a bit longer or uh like under the elbow shorter you can do that so the the shape of the sweater it is quite uh, basic we have a lot of control on the sleeves but then the body is kind of just square basically like the body of the sweater you can choose to make it you know tighter or really uh, larger shorter uh, longer so you can do all these things but there's not a lot of shaping going on uh, in the body so if this is something that you really really don't like if you like all your sweaters to be very very fitted and you know like customized to your curves then you might want to skip this pattern but uh, I hope you can see in the examples, just on uh, some examples on how you can play with it and how it looks on me. <laughs> I only have me here. <laughs> but um, yeah, hopefully as we continue this uh, and people make it, then I can, you know, share with you more pictures of other people's experience and I'll do my best to figure out Ravelry and put this pattern also there so that the world can enjoy it because I think this construction is brilliant. If I do say so myself, I have had so much fun with it and I think there is so much potential here. I have at least like three more ideas for sweaters that will look completely different using the same basic construction. So let me say a few words about that. Um, I will show you every part of the process to the most minute details in my opinion but just to give you an idea so as i said this is the half and half sweater and we're starting um, from the cuff so the first thing we're going to do is the ribbing then we're going to join it then we're going to do the sleeve from here to here then i'm going to show you how to do the body and let me tell you this is one of the most satisfying parts of making the sweater is seeing how the body comes together because uh, basically until we have both halves of the sweater and we seam them together here, this is a seamless sweater. There are no seams here. There are no seams here. It is mwah, so, so lovely. I just, I just love that. I mean, I've done different constructions and seaming is great and I have sweaters that I made with seams here and here and here and they can turn out great but this was just 
a joy. So the seams are actually here in the middle and in the back in the middle. So we do the halves. I show you how to do the body and then I show you how to split it to the front panels and the back panels. We first do the back panels and connect them together and this is where our sweater will become one. The two halves will become a whole uh, and then we can actually try it as one piece until then we have to like just try the sleeve uh just try the half every time and see how it fits and then we can make uh, better decisions about the front of the sweater and you can also adjust it like for me for example i need a little bit more fabric on my back because i have a small chest and that is sometimes something that you don't see a lot of uh, that you don't necessarily see in patterns a lot of patterns are just you know the two panels from back and front that are the same width. So with this design, you can very easily remove rows or add them according to your body type and the design you want. And yeah, so then we're going to stitch it here. And then all we have to do is do the um, kind of the, the seam at the neckline or the edging or ribbing or whatever and at the bottom of the sweater and we're done. So. It's not as simple as I make it sound, but it's pretty simple when you just take it, you know, one step at a time. And once you make one, I'll tell you, you have, you'll see how easy it is to make more. Now, I am not, I'm not a fan of tiny, tiny details and counting things and all those things. However, because we're doing these in two halves, you do need to pay attention as you're making this that both halves of your sweater are identical. So that means I will tell you when to check that your stitch counts are identical, you know, make sure that both your ribbing are identical and then that the uh, stitches for the sleeves uh, have the same number and then that you do the increases in the same places. So you do have to keep an eye on that and I'll show you how to do that. It's not complicated and in it really depends on kind of the design you want. Uh, this sweater, for example, has actually uh, a lot more increases than my other sweaters in the sleeves. So because you can see it's like a more fitted sleeve, the other ones are just kind of more baggy. So those are easier to make and keep track of. But it's all very, very simple. You just have to pay attention because you don't want to get to the stage where you're connecting your two halves and you discover that one side is a bit bigger than the other because that would be really, really frustrating. <laughs> um, okay, so I think this will just be like the introduction video. If you have any questions, leave them below. I will also give you recommended, suggested amounts of yarn. I really can't give you exact numbers because it depends on your size and the yarn you're using, but I can give you an idea of how much yarn I needed for uh, the, the sweaters that I showed you. So some of them are, you know, more cropped and then others are longer. Some are made with DK yarn, some with uh, four weight, more chunky. So there's a great variation here, but just to give you an idea. So I'll do my best to be helpful with this, but I can't know for sure how much you will need. I can only kind of, you know, guesstimate. Uh, what we're going to do in the next video is we're going to do a nice large swatch which will help me kind of show you the stitches very very simple but it's nice to just see how it works on a sample before you start the sweater and then you'll feel a lot more confident to play around with the stitch because the sleeves are made in a spiral in the round and like continuously and then the body is made back and forth so, you know, there's like a wrong side and a right side. So if you feel comfortable with a stitch, which is very, very simple, uh, you will also find those changes kind of easy to adjust to. This will just save you the, you know, all the question marks. And um, I, think, I think it's better, especially if you're not very confident with making sweaters. I think this will kind of bring you to the beginning of making the pattern uh, just more comfortable, more confident. So that's what we'll be doing in the next video. And then after that, we will start our sweater nice and slow, just with the cuffs. So don't worry, um, you know, if you can't join the schedule, 
can do this at your own pace and I hope you will enjoy this as much as I do. I've made four sweaters, I love all of them and I'm really really excited to make more uh, as this year goes on and I continue to explore this construction. I hope you will fall in love with it like I did and um, yeah and also see the possibilities. I can only show you a few things but there is so much more that you can do and yeah I hope we will explore this together so thank you so so much for watching and I'll see you in another video very very soon. Take care bye bye!